I'm going to be sharing information today that I've never talked about before. In fact, I, I spent some time this morning adding new slides to this PowerPoint from various sources because the, the field of genetic engineering is evolving very quickly. But unfortunately, our ethics and morals and, and long-term vision and understanding of the DNA and consequences is not evolving at the same time. Before we start, I want to get a, a sense of you and what your habits are. So I'm going to ask you to rate yourself in terms of from 0% to 100%. What percentage of your diet is organic? And I'm going to make it hard and say that includes going out to eat, going to movies, eating at other people's houses, everything, going on vacation. Give yourself one number right now from zero to 100, and I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand if you're in the following categories. How many people are zero to 20%? Raise your hand. Okay, I'm looking around, I see several people. 20 to 40% organic, raise your hand about the same amount, 40 to 60%, about the same amount, 60 to 80%, similar, 80 to 100%, and a little bit less. Okay, this is pretest. We're gonna see what your numbers are gonna be like in the future. And now I wanna ask you, I'd like you to rate GMOs in comparison to climate change in terms of a planetary threat. Three questions, are GMOs less dangerous? about the same or more. Okay, how many people say less dangerous? Raise your hand. About the same? Raise your hand. More dangerous? Raise your hand. Well, more dangerous clearly has it. <coughs> Maybe five, uh, <coughs> five to one. Um, and that's, I found that interesting. I asked that question for the first time in September, and I wasn't expecting it. But this is the eighth audience I've asked. And in all eight audiences, it was equal to or greater was, was the GMOs versus climate change. Now I'm gonna tell you why I think that's the case. And I'm gonna do it by showing you, I'm gonna start this lecture by leaving the stage and show you instead a three minute video, which is at the, at the website protectnaturenow.com. And after watching it, it gives a sense of one of the new areas that we're focusing on that's absolutely critical, an existential threat like no other. So you're going to enjoy watching this three-minute minute video, and I'll come back on. If we stop climate change, save our oceans, and protect our soils, we may still lose the natural world we cherish. A quiet invasion is underway where companies who profit from altering DNA are declaring open season on all parts of nature. Like the gold rush of the Wild West, there is a global gene rush underway, moving from engineering crops to engineering entire ecosystems. From algae to animals, fungus to flowers, bacteria to bees. With genetic engineering techniques such as gene editing costing less than ever, Nothing is off limits. Once released, GMOs reproduce. Artificial changes can spread through the environment and corrupt the gene pool. We have no strategies to clean it up. The only thing lasting longer than a permanently altered gene pool is extinction. Last century, the assault of synthetic chemicals polluted nature. Today's genetic assault could replace nature forever. What is the most common outcome of genetic engineering? Surprise side effects. It's not that individuals seek to permanently replace nature with unpredictable laboratory creations. It's thousands upon thousands of labs racing to get their invented organisms out there first. And many governments, including the US, Australia, Argentina, Brazil, and Japan, are eliminating regulations and safety precautions, hoping that GMO companies can make quick profits and dominate. 
On June 6th, the Trump administration proposed new rules that would make almost every GMO exempt from regulations by the Department of Agriculture. On June 11th, President Trump signed an executive order to further erode government oversight. In addition, it authorizes the U.S. State Department, trade representatives, and other agencies to work together to convince the world to accept GMOs. And by October 9th, have a strategy in place to use the maximum financial, political, and diplomatic pressure to arm-twist the nations of the world into fully accepting America's GMOs. Do you think the citizens of the world will have something to say about that? We do. In fact, we invite you to join a global protest to say it loud and clear. It's time to blow the whistle not just for our children and grandchildren, but for all living beings and all future generations. They're depending on us. Protect nature now. Well, there you have it.